Twitch chat plays Pokemon is amazing, but what if we could do that with literally any game? Well, you can. Today, I'm showing you how to give your chat full control of any game on your stream. This works with Twitch or YouTube. You can either let chat type commands to control the game or lock them behind channel points, paid subs, or anything really. And most importantly, it is entirely free. So let's get straight into it after our sponsor. Owned, your one-stop shop as a streamer, have created an entire scene editor and integrated it into their free version of Own Pro. This means not only can you now get full overlays from webcam borders, alerts, labels, and more set up in literally three clicks. And if you want to use literally any of their packs on their website, you can upgrade from the free version to the paid and get access to their entire library. Oh, and for a little extra month, if you want, you can also get access to the entire Epidemic Sound subscription, which is over 40,000 songs and 90,000 sound effects. If you want to support me, check out the link in the description to try Own Pro's new free scene editor and more. Thank you so much, Own. First up, head to the streamer bot website that I will link in the description for you. This is the tool we're going to use to let viewers control your game. You'll download it, right click it, extract the zip file, and then you're going to get this big folder of random shit. It looks very confusing, so personally, I like to move this entire folder somewhere I can easily remember, like my OBS resources folder on my desktop. This is where I keep all of my plugins and overlays so I never lose them. I'll then go into that folder and I'll find the .exe. I will right click that and I will pin this to my taskbar. This way it's easy to open alongside OBS by just going down to my taskbar, clicking OBS and clicking Streamerbot. So open them both up and now before anything else we need to connect our platform. So Twitch and or YouTube depending on what you're using. Go to the platform tab, click Twitch and on the left log into your main streaming account. If you happen to have a bot account, yes you can also log that in in this exact spot but we're not going to be using that today. And if you want to log into YouTube, well exactly the same. Go to platforms, click YouTube account and log in. The only thing platform will change in this video is you'll use different triggers to let chat control your game and the tool will read YouTube chat instead of Twitch chat if you're on YouTube for example. Next we need to connect Streamerbot to OBS or I guess Streamlabs if you want to run it that way but I can't bring myself to install Streamlabs again so I'm just going to show you OBS and I really hope it's similar but knowing Streamlabs they've probably made it overly complicated and impossible. So go to Stream Apps, right click and add. Name this OBS or ABCDEFG if you want and then if you're on the latest or even just a recent version of OBS you're going to leave this as version 5. If you're not, consider updating. Everything still works. There's no reason not to update as far as I know. Leave host and port as the exact same. And now for password, we need to get this from OBS. Head to OBS, go to tools, find WebSocket server and generate a password. Then click show connect information, copy the password and paste it back into the Streamerbot password section we were just at. Enable auto connect and reconnect, click OK. And if you don't auto connect, right click and just simply click connect. So this says connected. If you have issues getting connected, you're probably accidentally generating new passwords or not saving the password properly. So just watch the video again and do exactly as I did and it will work. With that done and connected, we are now ready to start setting up the Twitch chat controlled game. You can do this with pretty much any game that uses a keyboard, but it does work better for simpler games with simpler controls. A big note is it works really well with games that don't use a mouse to look around. So for example, Pokemon. This is incredibly easy to set up because it's A, B, up, down, left, right, start, and select. That's just eight buttons for chat to use and type in chat. But if you're setting up Minecraft like we are today, well, it has a lot of different keys that a normal player will press. And not just that, you also need to be able to hold down certain keys to walk or break blocks. So be aware, you'll get everything you need in this video to do more complex games, but if you're a beginner, consider starting on a simple game. Let's set up our first command, the one that will let viewers press spacebar and jump. If we go to the command section, we can right click add and here we can set up a new command. Let's name this exclamation mark space and add it to the command box. Now I want them to be able to put that command anywhere in the message. So over on the right, I will set the location to anywhere rather than just being forced to have it at the start of the message. Then I can change the permissions. For this, we want anyone to be able to use the spacebar. So we're not actually going to change it. But if we wanted only paying subscribers or only moderators to be able to use this, we would click on them and then we would click this little arrow over here to move them over to the right hand side. Now over on sources, I will check Twitch messages and because I linked my Twitch account, that will mean only my Twitch chat is being read. But you can pick YouTube if you're using YouTube as the test or if you want, pick both. It, I don't think it matters. Below that, I can set a global cooldown, which is how long all users have to wait to use that command again. Or if I just want, I can set it so one user can't keep triggering the same command over and over and over. Don't set these too high or else people will get bored waiting until they can use another command, but don't set them so low that anyone is going to be able to spam and ruin the entire thing. But once I'm happy with this, I click OK. Now I'm not going to bore you by showing me making every single command that you'll need because it's the exact same process every time. Make a new command, name it, put the command as spacebar or whatever the corresponding key is going to be, and then go from there. 
If there is a key to be pressed by chat to control the game, then there needs to be a corresponding command. So let's now show you how to link these commands you're going to make to your keyboard and in turn the game. Head over to the actions tab and I want you to right click actions and make a new action. This action is going to connect our spacebar command. So type space as the name. Now, before doing anything else, this is a really important step. Type out the group keyboard controls. This will give a new drop down where all your keyboard controls will appear as long as you select it each time you make a new action. It's really important for later. Please don't forget to do this. But with that done, we click OK. And now we're going to set up our trigger, AKA what event will happen to trigger the action. We're going to right click triggers and we're going to use the command that we just set up earlier as our trigger. But as I said earlier, you can also lock all these keyboard presses behind any trigger at all, such as Twitch follows, gifted subs, channel points, you name it. I'll show you how to get really fancy with it in a little bit. So select the command exclamation mark space in your dropdown by going to core commands, command trigger and pick space. Now our trigger is set, we need to set the sub action. I know it seems complex, trust me, once you're done, it'll look really simple and you'll be fine. Now we right click sub actions, go to core, system, keyboard press, and pick the space bar from this big list of different keys on your keyboard. Now, if we tried to test this, it wouldn't work because it would press spacebar instantly, which does nothing in this window. So for testing, I like to add a five second delay to the sub action by right clicking core delay 5000 MS, aka 5000 microseconds and drag it to the top. With that done, I right click the trigger, click test and tab over to Minecraft. If I wait five seconds after I click test, it will simulate the spacebar and let my character jump. Now, hopefully you've realized two really important things from this example. First, you may have realized I needed to be tabbed into the game for my keyboard to work with Minecraft. That is going to be the case with every single setup. If I have my game open, but I'm actually focused on a Google Doc over here, any keyboard redeems that happen from chat are going to happen in the Google Doc. I need to have Minecraft clicked so the keyboard is affecting the game. The second thing you've probably noticed is, well, your trigger worked. And if you want to test this even further, you can also go to your Twitch chat, type space, tab back to Minecraft, wait the five seconds. And if it jumps, well then congratulations, you've set up your first ever control command, which means you might not want the five second delay anymore. So go back to your sub action and delete those five seconds. This process is how you will set up every single keyboard press. Just make sure every action you make for your keyboard is under the keyboard controls group we set up earlier. It's really important for later when I'll show you how to set up a kill switch so you can turn all of this off if it starts going wrong. Now, while you're going through and setting all of these up for whatever game, you'll likely hit two snags. The first, as I said earlier, is that you can't simulate your mouse looking around. And the second is the key is pressed once quickly and not held down. To solve the first issue slightly, most games let you key bind the clicks of a mouse. So for example, take Minecraft. You can change the attack, destroy, use, place, and pick block buttons, which are all usually different mouse clicks to different unused keys on your keyboard such as numpad, or in this case, B and M is what I'm gonna be using. I'll then set a command, an action, and a sub action for those new keybinds so that viewers can control my mouse clicks with B, N, and M. Obviously they can't control where to look, which sucks, but for games like Minecraft, it actually becomes kind of like a fun co-op game where you're looking around and chat is controlling everything else. But if you don't wanna do co-op and you want chat to instead to have the full control of the game, well, you need to pick a game without mouse looking. But what about the second snag? What about holding down keys? Well, if we look at Minecraft again, you need to hold down keys to not just move forward, left, right, and backwards, but also to mine blocks. If I keybind attack destroy from your mouse to the M button instead, like I did earlier, and then tried to use it, you'd smack a block once, it would regen, and you'd be screwed. So let's set up a hold key command to tell people to hold down the key. We're going to use an extension for this. It's really simple, no downloads, just go to the link in the description, copy this code, click import top left of streamer bot, and paste it into the import string before clicking import. This will create a new new command called exclamation mark hold key. You'll need to go to the commands and right click and then enable it as well. So please don't forget or else none of this will work. Now, if we go back to actions, there are two more actions in your list. First is the hold key. This is the command typed in chat to hold down certain keys. And then the other is hold key underscore redeem. This is for channel point redeems. We're focusing on commands because a lot of you guys aren't affiliates. So ignore the redeem version for now. Go back to hold key, click it, and we get a few arguments over on the right. These are the settings we need to set up. Blacklist means any keys you don't want viewers to be allowed to hold down and whitelist are keys that should be allowed to hold down. If you want them to access all the keys except only a few of them, add them to the blacklist. But if you want them to access none of the keys except a few, 
add them to the whitelist. We're going to add to the whitelist WASD by double clicking whitelist in the arguments and then typing WASD. But we're also going to add B, N, and M because we want viewers to be able to hold down M to break blocks, remember? Below that is testing. This is a delay we will turn off later, but for now it helps us test by delaying the command five seconds before triggering, much like we set up earlier. Below that is default time. This should change depending on the game, but in short, 1000 MS is one second, and whatever the number here is how long the key is held for. Personally for Minecraft, I set this to 3500 because that's how long it takes to break wood barehanded, but I find four seconds might be better, just overall. Now, once this is set up, you'd go into Twitch chat and type exclamation mark, hold key, space W, wait five seconds, making sure you're tabbed into whatever game you're playing, and your character will start walking forward for four seconds. If it works, test the other keys as well, such as A, S, D, B, N, M. And if you're happy, right click testing and turn testing off for it to be now instant rather than delayed by five seconds. Now that is pretty much all of it, except I need to show you how to set up a kill switch to turn all of this off. So stay tuned, but first, what about big troll commands? Like what if we wanted to drop every item in our toolbar inside Minecraft? Well, it's scarily easy to set this up. We make a new action called drop all. We make the sub action a series of keyboard presses that then do just that. For example, keyboard press one, which selects toolbar slot one, and then keyboard press Q right after, which drops the item that I've got selected. I can then repeat the Q press a few times for turning it all into a group by right clicking group and moving it up. I'll now duplicate this group nine times, and then I'll go through the new eight that I've just duplicated changing their name so they correspond to the toolbar from one to two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then I'll add a little delay at the start before running a test. But wait, we didn't set up a trigger, so what are we testing? Well, we don't want this to just be a basic command that anyone can redeem or else we'd never get anything done. We want the trigger to be something harder to do, like a Twitch sub. So right click triggers, go to Twitch subscriptions and pick maybe a gifted sub, a subscription or any other event that you want to be able to activate this. Once that's done, right click it and click test tab into the game, and as you can see, it'll drop everything. Now, as I said at the start, giving randoms on the internet access to your keyboard might not be a great idea. This is a fairly safe way of doing it because really you're not giving them access to everything. You're just giving them access to a few individual keys that you'll set up and control. But if you set it up wrong, it can cause issues. That's why we're gonna make sure we have a kill switch. The first is just closing Streamerbot. If you close Streamerbot, nothing will work. Literally, it just all breaks in seconds. No one can redeem anything. The second is a kill command. Make a new command called exclamation mark controls off. Don't give access to anyone except mods and yourself. Then head back to the actions platform and make a new action called turn off controls. Set the trigger to be the command we just made. And then you'll need to set up two sub actions here. They should be set as core actions, set action group state. And you want to set it as disable hold key and the other as disabled keyboard controls. Now, if you just type exclamation mark controls off in your chat or even if you just right click and test the trigger, it will turn all those actions in those groups off. Hence why grouping them all earlier was very important. When you're ready to turn all this back on, you can either make the same command in reverse or just right click the action group and click enabled. If you need help setting any of this up, please just join the Discord. We'll be able to help you run through everything. You can post screenshots, click here for more life-changing OBS tips, and then click here to support the channel for just $1 a month. I'll see you guys next week.